Hello and welcome to our latest Insider interview. Today in the studio I have with me William Meaden, who is full manager of the JP Morgan Claver House Investment Trust. William, thanks for your time today. Pleasure. So JP Morgan Claver House recently announced its 50th consecutive year of dividend increases. And over the past year, it's grown its dividend by 8.2%. So what were the key drivers behind delivering that dividend growth? Well, yes, yeah, so Callum and I and the board are delighted to have uh, announced that 50th consecutive dividend increase. It's the, it's the longest record of consecutive dividend increases of any investment trust invested wholly in UK equities, which, which Claver House is. And that's been delivered through this barbell approach of holding the very best value stocks and the very best growth stocks. And that combination has provided good capital returns and good income returns in a very consistent manner. And in periods where dividends haven't been so plentiful in the UK market, for example, some five years ago, there's some very significant dividend cuts in the, in the UK market. Uh, investment trusts, one of the great beauties of them is they can smooth their dividend payments. They can draw upon reserves that have been accrued in more, difficult, in, in more plentiful times and those are paid out in, in more difficult times. And so it's that combination, that barbell approach, the best value stocks, the best growth stocks, combined with when things are really tough, drawing on those reserves that have been tucked away in the good times. And that's enabled us to increase the dividend for, for, for 50 consecutive years. And when you look back, the returns for those investors who have been in, invested for that 50 year period have been ahead of the UK market, ahead of inflation and delivered in, a, in that very smooth manner, which we think is, 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 is an attractive trade. And the 8.2% dividend growth year on year, was that all from the underlying investments or did you dip, dip into the reserves as well? There have been times when we've dipped into reserves, you know, after the, 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 the financial crisis of 2008, 2009, uh, most companies took, their, took the opportunity to cut dividends to, 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 to protect their balance sheet. And yes, Claver House, like many investment trusts, then drew on those, those reserves that have been tucked away in, in more plentiful times. So our shareholders didn't suffer the dividend cuts that they would have done if they'd been in an open-ended, say, index fund. Uh, and that is one of the real beauties of, of investment trusts for income shareholders. They can, the way Claver House has, deliver that very steady income stream to our shareholders, which we know is really important to them. So last year, we again paid a covered dividend. We added to reserves. So all the income that we paid out to, to shareholders came from the underlying investments, and we still had some left over to tuck into reserves, which gives Callum and I and the board a great degree of confidence that we, we're not going to stop at 50. We can keep those dividend increases going. That's my next question. I was going to ask how sustainable is the dividend going forward? So in other words, how healthy are those dividend reserves? Well, it, is, it isn't a guaranteed income product, and we obviously in these particularly uncertain times can't guarantee anything. But I think the, the risk reward for shareholders is about as good as it gets when you have a, an investment trust which is invested in a lot of high yielding shares, has these reserves which make up some 80, 90 percent of a whole year's dividend. So we've got substantial resources we can draw on should things get more difficult. And we think that gives us a, a really high degree of confidence without a guarantee stamp on it that we can keep those dividend increases going for, for the foreseeable future. In terms of the macro backdrop, there's a lot of negativity at the moment towards the UK. The economy looks like it's going to be entering a recession. Interest rates are on the rise. Inflation's at high levels. Does this make you more wary of investing in UK consumer-facing businesses? Well, there's, there's two things I'd say to, to, to that, Cal. Firstly, the, the UK economy is not the UK stock market. If you look at the FTSE 100 stocks where Claver House is predominantly invested, some 70% of their turnover comes from overseas. So, they, you know, it's an accident of history that BP or Shell or AstraZeneca is called the UK company. These are global companies. And the UK stock market is arguably the cheapest developed stock market in the world at the moment. It's paying the highest yield. It's on one of the lowest PEs. And that combination, therefore, of, of those two means that you're getting global exposure on the cheap. And we think that's really attractive for investors. And you're seeing that reflected in the UK stock market performance. It was the only major developed economy, for example, to give a positive return last year. I mean, it was only a small return, but compared to the S&P index in the States, the NASDAQ, you know, European stock markets were all down, many of them 
big double digits. The UK stock market gave a positive total return. To come to your points on, uh, on consumer stocks, we see you know, the UK consumer actually is, is, is proving much more resilient than, than, than many forecasters would have, would, would have expected. Uh, you're seeing quite good figures coming from retailers such as Next, where you have you know, the excellent Lord Wolfson in charge, one of the best retailers in the world, I think. And that gives us a, 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 a degree of confidence that, that shares at the current level in consumer stocks are, 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 are very attractive because the actuality is coming in much better than expectations and the ratings on these shares is, is very often at historic lows. And amongst the big shares in the FTSE 100 that you own, are there any that you would use as an example that you know, can continue to perform well and be relatively immune to the performance of the UK economy? Well, we try not to go nap on any one individual stock. We like to think we've got enough humility to recognise that on any one stock, sector or theme, we could be wrong. And so we always run a diversified portfolio. We uh, the range of stocks in the portfolio is, is quite a focused portfolio, but it ranges from 60 t stocks to, at the upper end, 80 stocks. And currently, we're at the lower end of that range. There are 63 stocks in the portfolio. But, so, but there's a wide range of stocks and sectors where we, we see real value because this low rating that the UK stock market is on. So the oil sector, the mining sector, the pharmaceutical sector, uh, retailers such as Nex, such as Dunelm, we, we find for the medium term investor, obviously we, we like everybody else can't you know, predict with any degree of accuracy what's going to happen in the short term, but for those patient investors who are prepared to tuck money away, we see real opportunity here to make significant returns over the medium term. And meanwhile, while you're waiting, you're getting this very healthy and steady dividend stream coming from, from the investment trust. For several years now, there's been a trend of investors going overseas for global income. What's your thoughts on that trend and how would you convince investors to back UK equity income right now? Well, I think it makes sense for investors to, to, to spread their investments, you know, to diversify. You know, diversification is probably the only free lunch in investment. Um, but I think because of this site and vendor, this change that's come, this, this, this turning point from, the, from Ukraine, the neglect that has been uh, you know, shown to the UK market since the, since the Brexit vote of 2016, you've seen this big derating. That, I think, gives the real opportunity for investors to re-look at the UK stock market and see value in what are global companies, BAT, AstraZeneca, Glencore. The, these are really genuinely global companies, but are sitting on significant discounts to their peer group overseas. And uh, at, at a time when there's been money you know, flowing out of UK equities the last 10 years, I think it's time to reassess. And you're starting to see that reflected in the UK stock market performance. It was, it was one of the few markets to be up last year. Uh, it's significantly ahead of the S&P, the American index this year. So I think investors are quite rightly reassessing the prospects of the, uh, for the UK stock market. And, and many of them coming to the conclusion that there's real value on offer. And finally, a question we ask all fund managers, do you have skin in the game? Do I hold shares in Claverhouse? Ye yes, I do. Um, part of my re remuneration at, at JP Morgan is given in Claverhouse shares. Uh, my wife holds Claverhouse shares. My children hold Claverhouse shares. Uh, so I, uh, I, I can assure investors that I have a symmetry of interest with them, that if Claverhouse does well, I'm happy like they are, and in more difficult times, I. I feel the pain that they do, but um, I'm very optimistic about the, the prospects for the trust over, over the medium term. And it really is important for investors to stretch their time horizon to be, and to you know, start to reappreciate the old fashioned virtues that have been rather neglected of patience, valuation, compound effect of reinvesting dividends. And I think in this new era, uh, where things are gonna be more difficult, I think one needs to be more patient and, and, and tuck a fund like Claver House away for the medium to long term. William, thank you for coming into the studio. My pleasure, enjoyed it. That's all we have time for for today. You can check out the rest of our insider interviews on our YouTube channel, where you can like and subscribe. Hopefully, see you next time.